everyone again. Uh, this is Stéphane Pouillard, uh, board member and partner of One Business World. I am uh, delighted to present you uh, Emanth Seti from Zero Circle today. It's our second speaker of the day, and again, a very important subject, sustainability. So you know, we heard about the criticality of, of uh, climate resilience just before uh, with uh, Chiara, and now we are going to go uh, one step further because there is no such uh, sustainability development without any funding. So uh, Emanth and his team have focused on an amazing B2B green finance marketplace and I'm, I'm very keen and excited to hear more and to discover about this, this uh, organization that you have developed wrapped around AI if I'm not mistaken. So um, yep. Iman, the floor is yours. Very keen to hear how you go about the, your startup. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for the introduction and uh, I'm looking forward to this uh, presentation. So let me share my screen. Okay, um, so yeah, just by way of introduction, my name is Himan Seri, um, and I'm the founder of Zero Circle, and we are on a mission to unlock sustainable finance within the B2B ecosystem. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, one of the challenges with finance is that there's a ton of money in the, uh, you know, the loans and the pension funds and the community bank, but they're not today deployed for uh, green finance vehicles and green finance investments, right? And anything green finance, we're typically talking about, you know, installation of EV stations, uh, green building retrofitting, solar power uh, setup, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of uh, projects that happen at the high-end scale, you know, $100 million, $200 million, where banks like JP Morgan and uh, um, Credit Suisse, for example, can fund these, these projects. And there's a ton of stuff happening at the microfinance level with, you know, uh, the UN and the OECD uh, doing a lot of microfinancing for farmers and developing nations, right? But there's a huge gap in the middle, and that's where we are focused on. What we are trying to unlock is a way for small and mid-sized businesses to tap into the green finance ecosystem and essentially convert $60 trillion of assets under management into comparable green loans and green assets. But today, the process is very complex. It's expensive, and there's no standardized approach for it. So Zero Circle has essentially created an AI-based solution to allow for assessment and qualification of these organizations for green finance. So we do, using our AI model, we are able to kind of quickly qualify these companies for financing aligned with various loan programs and bank um, uh, criteria that these programs assign with. And then more importantly, monitor their ongoing sustainability to meet some of the loan covenants. Basically, we're looking to create the lending tree for green finance. And we use our proprietary AI model to drive that impact. And we've created a, a scoring model for driving impact performance based on the lender's uh, uh, scorecard criteria, right? Different lenders have different requirements based on what they're looking to lend, which industries they're lending, what type of criteria they're looking for. And our impact performance uh, scorecard allows us to do that. Uh, where we are currently focused on is primarily in the logistics and construction industries and anywhere from between 50,000 to $10 million in loans. And our subscription pricing model is more based on a subscription for the organization and some sort of transaction fee with the bank. The market is pretty huge, right? Um, today, only 4% of the actual fund market is actually focused on sustainable loans and sustainable funding. And there's a huge gap on the way as if any of us have to meet our net zero commitments. And financing is a you know, pretty strong vehicle and incentive for these companies to do this. In addition to that, uh, the, the, you know, McKinsey recently stated that to reach our net zero goals by 2050, on average, every year, there has to be about three plus million, three plus trillion dollars of financing that is required to meet our net zero goals that most of, you know, many of these companies have uh, stated to commit to. We've had significant traction since starting and focusing on green finance. Uh, we have a couple of pilots underway. Uh, we have a number of LOIs we have signed. And we have a strong pipeline connecting banks and, uh, uh, and identifying organizations to do these assessments. In addition to that, we have a very strong team. Uh, my background is in supply chain compliance and third party risk. Um, uh, in my past life, I basically ran the risk and compliance organization for Dun & Bradstreet, where I basically had about 2000 customers globally from enterprises to you know, smaller organizations. And one of the challenges I saw was companies could not scale their um, risk programs effectively. And, we've developed, you know, and I see the same thing happening again with uh, sustainability and ESG. So what we've kind of created essentially is a framework to allow these small and mid-sized organizations to come into the fold and essentially start to you know, think about sustainability as a key tenant and a key priority for their organization. 
In addition to that, my partner is um, Ambi. He's a, a significant experience in Zoho um, and built you know, sales and marketing solutions uh, for small and mid-sized businesses. And Rakul, who is my CTO, who actually was my CTO at uh, Dun Bradstreet, Street, who eventually will be uh, joining us once we uh, secure our funding. We're looking to fund about 500K um, in a pre-seed round, um, essentially to onboard about 200 organizations and five banks onto our ecosystem and launch the marketplace as part of this, um, uh, as part of this launch. Okay, so that's uh, my presentation. Any questions, uh, please feel free to reach me. In addition to that, I'm gonna quickly switch to a quick demo and show you what we are currently doing um, as well and show you how it actually works. Uh, hey, hey man, uh, just let yeah. me let me congratulate you for 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 the high quality of your pitch. Very structured, very powerful message. Uh, ambitious, but realistic as well. So, uh, very keen indeed to 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 see and feel a little bit more your scorecard and the the the, the go to market strategy that you have at hand when you approach yeah. concrete business case or use case as we call it. But um, wanted to, to, to just uh, mention, uh, very, very uh, impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it. I'm super excited with this kind of concept, right? Because I see you know, a lot of interest in this. Um, and the more we talk to customers and uh, banks about this, we see this thing actually working, right? But you know, we have a long way to go, right? This is not a short-term problem. This is a 20, 30-year problem in the making, right? Um, okay, so first I want to kind of show you a couple of things today. So first thing is, um, so we have an MVP of the platform that is live for the organization. So organizations can come in and set up their sustainability profile. That's the first step. And uh, in this example, we're using a, an actual company, MicroStar, um, and they are operating in the technology and communications hardware industry. Um, there are a couple of existing standards today, uh, and there, you know, there'll be new standards we we'll support uh, uh, as we progress further. But today we are supporting SASB and GRI, which are two existing um, sustainability standards, uh, global standards in the industry today. And in this case, you can see SASB definition. So uh, what this is telling is under the hardware industry, let's say under the you know, uh, human capital uh, category, there's a, you know, a metric that these companies will have to report on, right? Same thing with business model and innovation, et cetera, right? So these are the various metrics that these companies will have to report on. And what we've developed is an AI model to basically take information from their existing policy documentation, uh, websites, any information that they can provide us and essentially make sure we can build out these profiles very, very quickly, right? So you can quickly see you know, some of the documents we've uploaded about this company. You can see there's a number of matches that our AI model has found. You can preview those matches and essentially you can confirm that you know these sections and snippets of the uh, of these particular documents are associated with these um, uh, metrics and what that gives you is a quick way to build out your profile right um, right now on the online platform we only support the SASB. we just recently completed the gri uh, ai model as well and uh, some of that is still, still being worked on right but in the meantime, we are continuing to do these assessments uh, for organizations because now we have all of that sitting behind the scenes. So this is kind of the final output that we would essentially create on behalf of the organization for the bank. So the idea is that, you know, take a, take a company, we look at their, you know, uh, uh, information about the company, we get it through our third party partners. Uh, and then our partner also provides a certain scores we get from, from this company. In addition to that, we work with the organization to identify their financial projections, you know, uh, the last two years and then in the next couple of years. Uh, but more importantly, this is where sustainability starts to kick in. Um, there are a number of uh, KPIs that the financial industry has identified as part of evaluating uh, sustainable initiatives. So what we do is we work with the organization based on some of the documentation they've provided and also in like a, you know, kind of like consultative basis to identify these uh, metrics that they're looking for, right? The banks are looking for. Um, and then finally, using our AI model, we are able to quickly create the disclosure analysis and disclosure summary and the critical areas that these organizations have to look at if they are trying to be a sustainable company, right? So this provides you the relevant uh, uh, SD, UN SDGs, GRI, and SASB indicators that these companies can look at. And again, you can go through these tabs and you know, kind of look into all the sub documents and the drill downs associated with them. But the most important thing is essentially creating this impact performance rating. So think of this like a scorecard that allows banks to configure what is important for them, right? Because you know, fundamentally, every bank has a different priority uh, that they are looking to invest in. 
right? And they might say, okay, you know, uh, my criteria for investing in sustainable companies at the end of the day is still financially motivated. So 80% of my criteria is, you know, based on financial indicators, and then 20% is based on sustainable indicators. But there are other institutions that are driven by community development or any other kind of initiatives that they want to do, and they might have a 50-50 split. So these scorecards are essentially configured by the bank based on the data that's available on our platform uh, and through our APIs, and essentially given a scorecard for that. So you as an organization, if you're looking for, you know, let's say a $5 million loan to transition your trucking fleet, from you know, legacy trucks to a more fuel efficient trucks in which you can get close to 30% reduction in emissions. Now you can essentially quickly look which bank actually is the most uh, ideal bank that meets some of the criteria that you're looking for and some of the criteria that bank is looking for. And this is where the marketplace starts to kick in, right? And so you might essentially be B plus for bank number one and A minus for bank number two, right? And then you can essentially say, okay, I'm going to apply with bank number two because I, I seem to have the best match with the criteria that the bank is looking for. That's kind of the the you know the, uh, the assessment process we're looking at and essentially driving this automated marketplace to do that. So we are still very early stage. Some of these pieces are kind of uh, you know kind of manually done, and we're in the in the background building up the components of the marketplace uh, to essentially make this essentially matchmaking a little bit more seamless, a little bit more automated, a little bit more self service. So banks and institutions and organizations can uh, try to find each other using the right criteria and using our AI capability. Right. So that's the high level overview of the platform. Um, happy to kind of answer any questions. You know, please feel free to reach out to me around this and, um, and you know, go in depth in terms of the, you know, our technology and our capabilities and how we're looking to scale this go to market going forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Amen. Um, as you pointed out, I mean, this is this is a, a must needed and, and long term uh, objective yeah. and exercise that we have to go through. Uh, very interesting feedback I get here uh, from the people. Lots of very good uh, positive uh, feedback for what you try to achieve. One question I got was, is it loan and only loan on which you get scorecard? Uh, first question. Yeah. Then second question is, how many clients or you know how many companies do you have already up and running on your platform? That's the second question. I so right now we are looking primarily at the loan vehicles. We are not looking at any other kind of vehicles yet. Um, technically, this could apply for other types of uh, investment and in, you know um, vehicles as well, in a financial vehicle. But we want to start somewhere. Loans seem to be a very big market, um, and there's enough interest both in the U.S. and internationally with green loans. There's existing you know, con in our frameworks that we can essentially uh, uh, leverage without having to recreate you know our own standard here. So loans seem like a good starting point for us, and it's a growing market. We're actually talking to a number of banks that are looking to significantly scale these operations. I, like I said, many of them are already doing this kind of thing for the large initiatives where they struggle with is how do they bring that to the small and mid-sized segment? And that's kind of what we are trying to simplify and automate, right? Uh, so there's a natural progression for companies to scale into this. So that's kind of where we're looking at. Eventually we look at other areas like private equity or you know just you know virtual uh, uh, early stage equity, but right now we're not looking at that. Um, where we are from a traction perspective, we are in the process of doing about, uh, we have a multi-stage assessment framework and process today. Um, it is still somewhat manual. It's not automated completely yet, and that's one of the reasons um, we are we are kind of you know kind of working on some of the automation components. Um, right now, we're doing about ten assessments uh, for various organizations globally to qualify for the loans. Um, we're and we are doing two that are doing financial assessment for loan qualification. One is a trucking company that is looking to you know decarbonize their fleet. And another one is an aqua farm that is looking to basically get a, a loan to pilot their salmon uh, fishing aqua farm that they've basically invested last six years in R&D in. Um, and it's about a $10 million in total you know, loan that we are trying to assess right now for loans. And then on the flip side, we're working, you know, talking to a number of banking partners to um, uh, become our loan partners, right? We are not, we are not a financial institution. We are not issuing the loans. We're basically you know, qualifying or pre-qualifying banks and these organizations on sustainability and integrating into the existing bank's underwriting process. So uh, we've uh, just recently signed our first banking partnership. We're going through a number of, um, you know, kind of uh, 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 contracts before we can announce it. And then we're talking to a number of other banking institutions to, you know, kind of close our partnerships. And once we have, you know, critical mass of these partners, then we can start to drive the go-to-market engagement and the you know kind of market engagement for uh, the organization that are looking for these loan programs 
Iman, this is my own question, but I'm very interesting. If for, for your own uh, sake, what would be, I would say, uh, the number of, of uh, SMBs that you would uh, have helped through this exercise? What would be the magic number where you would feel very proud of, of having completed, uh, I would say, the ambition of zero cycle? Yeah, I got a similar question a while ago, and I had an ambitious kind of statement for that, right? Um, I'm looking to get um, about 100,000 SMBs financed through these programs globally. Um, and more importantly, you know, long term, again, this is, you know, hypothetical, but, you know, if we ever get there, my, my goal is to kind of make sure that we can assess about a trillion dollars in loans that is going through this ecosystem, right? That's uh, an ambitious goal. Uh, I don't think it's unreasonable. Like I said, there's a ton of money in the ecosystem and ton of financing in the ecosystem. And it's a matter of providing the right market, the right you know, uh, technology and the right kind of integration and partnerships with the ecosystem that makes sense. Um, and I think we are ripe for that you know, transition, right? Because uh, you know, I, I come from the supply chain world. I've seen a lot of supply chain financing there's trillions of dollars that are just going in normal financing, like standardized financing. Even if we can convert, you know, one to 5% of that into sustainable financing, I think we'll be able to achieve that goal, right? So, you know, that's kind of where I'm looking at in terms of at least the next, you know, five to 10 years. An ambition and, and, and actually extremely energizing plan ahead of you. I mean, it was <laughs> uh, Eman Seti, CEO of Zero Cycle at One Startup World, Summer Edition 2023. It was a pleasure having you. Uh, very exciting to hear more and to follow you uh, over the, the coming years uh, with this uh, amazing story that you are just lining up for all of us here. It's good for the world and it's good for the planet. So thank you so much. Uh, you awesome. Know. Thank you so much. A pleasure to uh, meet you. And I'm looking forward to uh, you know kind of talking to anyone interested in this topic. Bye. Bye.